Hi, I'm Gary and welcome to my shop. In this video I'm going to show you how to make this double-edged safety razor handle for shaving. And it's become quite popular because these are a lot, uh, the blades for these are a lot cheaper than a lot of the other blades out there like the Mach 3's, Mach 5's and whatever. And these give you a pretty good shave. That's a real easy kit to make and I'm going to show you how to do it. So this is the kit for the double edge safety blade razor handle from the PSI and that's a kit comes in a Ziploc bag like this and the kit number is PKRASAF2 I'll put that in the description below also and it comes with these parts wrapped in some papers you have the head that comes apart and you can put your blade in there then the handle part with a knurled knob on the bottom so you can unscrew and loosen up the head. The brass tube actually just pulls off here so you can do your body, shape it, sand it, and then finish it. And then with the assembly process, stick this back in there again. And this ring here is a tension. Uh, holds this knob in there from falling out on you. Then once it's together, the threaded end inside there will lock onto this. It matches up and that will hold the top uh, securely in place here. So pretty much all there is to the kit other than uh, the instructions with uh, turning instructions and assembly instructions. So I'll go on here and show you how I make this. Okay, the first step in this process is going to be to select a piece of material for the handle. In this case I'm picking a piece of Coco Bolo. And what I want to do is mark this slightly longer than the brass tube. And then I'll be able to have some excess so I can trim up the ends and get them square. So and then I will go over to the bandsaw, cut this to the length. So I've got my piece cut. Next I need to do is put a center mark on there. I use this block squid and just kind of hold it on there for the center. And that gives me a nice center mark. Very easy. I'll mount it up into my vertical drill jig here. Okay, this one calls for a 10 millimeter drill bit to drill the hole for the tube. And since this is wood, I'm using a brad point bit. If I was doing acrylics, I would use an acrylic bit. Using a wood bit on an acrylic usually gets bad results. So I set my depth stop so that this just goes barely through the workpiece here so I don't go too far into my jig. And I'll drill this through and I'll have to make a few stops here and there to uh, let the bit cool. Let it cool for a little bit. Takes about three minutes. Hey, some more drilling here. Okay, that got through. Got a good hole through there, a little bit off center, but the way these handles turn out, uh, that'll be okay. I have this blank drilled through so I can put the brass tube in, and what I find with this one is that it's rather a loose fit. So what I'm going to do is use some epoxy glue here to glue this tube into the blank. And for that, I will use a little piece of wax paper, some paper towels, have some paper towels handy for wiping up any excess glue drippings. And then I'll mix this together, smear it on the tube, and then insert the tube into the blank. I'm going to do is smear the epoxy glue under the brass tube and insert it into the blank. And what I'm going to try to do is to avoid getting any of the epoxy glue to the inside of the tube. If I do, I can clean that out with a small round file. So I'm going to smear this around the brass tube itself. And then as I slide it into the blank, it will spread around some more. Get it up close to the edges and I can use my insertion tool to put this in and spin it as I go to get you know some good glue coverage here. And I get it in, 
close to the end there okay so obviously I do have some excess glue on here I'm gonna wipe off what I can and I've got enough of a gap in there that hopefully my barrel trimmer tool will clean that up pretty well if not I can go in there with my round file and clean that up better so I will give that some time to dry about six minutes for this kind of glue then we'll be ready to trim up the ends of this so it's square with the brass tubes okay here I am to trim the ends of this blank with a barrel trimmer to square up the ends I've got a 10 millimeter trimmer in here Let's go down slow and easy enough until I see the brass ends of the tube. Flip it around and do the other end. There we go. Got some good clean ends with the brass tube. And we'll go to the lathe. Okay, here I've got my 7mm pen mandrel. And I've got these bushings for turning this razor handle. They are a bushing number PKRASAF2BU. And I'll put that in the description below. So I put on first end of the bushing, then the workpiece, and looks like they're pretty well centered okay. The other end of the bushing, bring up the tailpiece, lock it to the bed, loosen that a little bit, tighten the quill maybe about a quarter turn, snug that just a little bit. Bring up my tool rest, or banjo as I call them, and I'll get that adjusted for the height of my lathe chisel so that this is running about perpendicular and about even with the edge of my lathe chisel. On this one I need to come up just a tad bit, and that looks pretty good. Okay. I'll start turning this at about three to four thousand RPM, get it to a good round, and then I'll start shaping it. Okay, I've got that uh, good smooth round here where I can start shaping it. I first start out by trying to get the ends of these close to the bushings. Leave a little bit extra there for sanding. And try to give a little bit of a comfortable feel for a contour there. Now I'm going to add a few lines in here uh, for grip and for style. And then to darken these a little bit, these lines, I'm going to use a little bit of this piano wire here to burn these in a little bit. Now I'll start the sanding process and I go from about a 150 grit down to a 600. Before this, I'm going to slow down my RPM to about 2000 RPM. In between these grits, I like to go across ways with the sandpaper to try and help remove some of the circular sanding marks. Yeah, that's looking pretty good. Now I can start with the finish. I'm going to go a little bit with the steel wool here. Yeah, and start with the finish here. I'm going to use this Aussie oil, which gives me a really good protective uh, coat and seal. Got to shake it up well, though. Then just apply a couple of drops on the cloth here. And then I'll apply it on there. Give it about a minute as I rub it in. It is a good, hard, glossy coat. It will be very protective. I'll do like three coats of this. Kind of feel the heat through your fingers as this warms up. And you know it's getting good. All right. I'll give it a couple more coats, and that's going to look really good. Well, to wrap this up, thank you for watching this video. Hope you enjoyed it, and I hope you got the inspiration to make something of your own. Please give me a like and share with your family and friends. 
And please subscribe to see what I may come up with next. Thank you.